the gangster rap world has been shaken again, this time by the violent death of the performer known as Notorious B.I.G. Los Ángeles, 8 a.m. La noticia de la muerte de Biggie llegó a todo el país. La policía asigna el caso a la división de Wilshire y no a la división especial para crímenes de alto perfil. I think one of the big mistakes made in the investigation was not moving it to the robbery homicide unit. Those guys are trained to do homicides. This is their expertise. It's hard to say why robbery homicide wasn't put on the case immediately. You got to go with supposition. I'm chief of police. Bernard Parks didn't see Biggie Smalls as a celebrity. I mean, he's not worth robbery homicide. A las 9 a.m., los testigos llegan a Wilshire para ser entrevistados. So they questioned us, asked us, did we see the person? It wasn't that long enough for us to really recognize the face or nothing, it was just real quick. They kept trying to get a sketch, and uh, we just knew he was black, and he had a bow tie. Just a few people who were on the street also helped the cops put together a composite. Con las descripciones de los testigos, un dibujante realiza el retrato del asesino. Es lampiño, de contextura mediana, cabello muy corto, lleva un traje azul y corbata de moño. Witnesses said the shooter looked like a member of the Fruit of Islam, which is the security wing of the Nation of Islam. There's a certain uniform look that the Fruits of Islam people have, and this guy had it to the team. There have long been stories in law enforcement about members of the Fruits of Islam working as contract killers. El 10 de marzo, un día después, los detectives dan una conferencia de prensa y muestran el retrato del asesino. I believe when uh, we make the arrest and I'm hoping that there will be a very good similar appearance between our composite and the uh, murder suspect. El retrato genera gran cantidad de llamadas, pero ninguna pista nueva. Quien recuerda algo es Eugene Deal, el guardaespaldas que viajaba en el suburban de Puffy. When investigators spoke with Eugene Deal, he placed a man that matched the description of the shooter outside the entrance to the Vi party. The guy had walked directly towards Puff's car. He had a blue suit, bow tie. We look at each other eye to eye. He didn't say anything to me. Nothing. I made sure that he knew I was good. You understand? And he looked at me, walked away, and walked right back down the street. Basically out of sight. I believe the shooter was watching every move that the Biggie Smalls entourage was making. Al iniciar la investigación, para muchos la policía cometió un grave error. En la conferencia de prensa revelaron que el arma asesina era una 9 milímetros. It was a very fast sequence of events with a 9 millimeter uh, weapon. To give the information out, to me it was a mistake. Lieutenant Moyne let the information out and he came back to me like three minutes later and he apologized for doing that because if I was the suspect, if I had a 9 millimeter gun, what would I do with my gun? Would I keep it? Heck no, that thing's gone. El 11 de marzo, el auto de Biggie llega al laboratorio forense para un análisis. El informe de balística dice que el asesino disparó seis veces a la puerta de Biggie debajo de la ventanilla. Cuatro balas dieron en Biggie, otra se alojó en la puerta y la última estaba en el asiento trasero izquierdo. La trayectoria muestra que las balas se dispararon desde un ángulo ascendente. El asesino iba en un vehículo más bajo. The analysis supported eyewitness accounts that bullets were fired into the suburban from an Impala. En los días siguientes, los investigadores entrevistan en Nueva York a Sean Puffy Combs y a otros acompañantes de Biggie que se habían marchado de Los Ángeles. According to the text I talked to, Puffy was not willing to give a lot of detail and very vague in his answers and didn't ask a lot of questions. Well, he didn't want to be involved in this. He didn't want it, you know, the stain attached to his company and his reputation. I'm pretty sure that was part of it. Puff, beg Big to go to that party. Big didn't want to go to that party because his legs was hurt. I think some weight of conscience about that and not wanting people to know that he was responsible for being, being there. I've spoken to the police. Everybody that was there spoke to the police. But I don't know who did this. I don't have an idea. And it's not right for people to speculate until the police find out, you know, exactly what's going on. El 13 de marzo, los casquillos de la escena del crimen son analizados. Los peritos sumergen los casquillos en un reactivo que hace visibles las huellas digitales. Luego aplican una cinta adhesiva y transfieren el reactivo del casquillo a la cinta. Inspeccionan la cinta buscando huellas, polvo y marcas. No encuentran huellas digitales en los casquillos de la escena del crimen. It's a disappointment because if you can get a partial and get a match on that, that'll be another clue that you can work on. Que no haya huellas no es de extrañar. Las huellas son difíciles de identificar debido a los roces al cargar las balas. I worked on the side for 10 years. I've solved over 
hundred, hundred hundred sides. I think I maybe gave maybe two or three fingerprints off of bullets. 17 de marzo, ocho días después del asesinato de Biggie. Los detectives tienen un retrato del asesino, pero no hay sospechosos ni pistas alentadoras. Sin embargo, el programa America's Most Wanted da una pista que podría resolver el caso. A Texas woman came forward and contacted America's Most Wanted and said she had videotape that she took that night. And so America's Most Wanted contacted the police department. I was told that the actual shooting was on the video. They were very excited about it and flew to Texas to get the videotape. They didn't actually capture the shooting. They were focusing on uh, Biggie's car when the shots were fired. The camera just went shaky, shaky, shake like, you know, you're nervous. There was no smoking gun. They couldn't see the license plate. It didn't, you know, you couldn't see the shooter. The video was essentially useless and they were back at square one. Cuando regresemos, la teoría del autor menos pensado, la policía de Los Ángeles. A continuación, en famosas escenas de crimen Notorious B.I.G., 